Susan Alamo speaking out for the next half hour with my guest. And oh, I have a lot of guests for you on this telecast. So be sure and stay right with us for the next half hour and hear me speak out and all my guests speak out. And now let me give to you the Alamo Brothers, our own Alamo Brothers, singing John the Revelator. My guests, believe it or not, are a family. And I want them to introduce themselves to you and in the order that they came to the church and that they came to know Jesus Christ. Now, what we're reaching out to share with you in this telecast is how Jesus reaches out from one to the other and how in, in this family here, of how each of them came and how they witnessed to the other members of the family and in order of how they came in and came to know the Lord. Now, I want to say to you out there that people don't just stand and, and bear their souls because they just want to do that. But in sharing with you what lives were before and then what Christ can do in those lives, in the lives of, of families that are, are broken, broken homes and, and all these things, we come as Christians to share with you the love of God that is in His Son, Christ Jesus, and how lives can so dramatically change when people open the doors of their hearts and ask Jesus to come into their hearts. Now, in the family, could we have a, a pan here of, of all this, these people in the family? And now the first one that came was who? It was me, Leon. Me, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leon, tell all of us how you came to be at the Tony and Susan Alamo Christian Foundation, what brought you there, uh, well, how'd you get here? Well, I got here on that bus that was regularly going up and down Hollywood. Uh, you know, with that sign on there, are you ready to meet God? Uh, actually, 
I thought I was missing the bus because I was over in L.A. and, uh, you know, I'd ran into some of the brothers and sisters uh, that were talking about the foundation. Now, I had, had already uh, determined to come up because, uh, you know, I'd heard about it earlier. A brother uh, told me about it. But I didn't know they had a bus in L.A., so I, I was going to come up in Hollywood and get that bus. And I went all the way across town. And uh, when I got there, uh, you know, at the intersection there, I, I was on a city bus. And the bus directly in front of me was the uh, Tony and Susan Lama Christian Foundation bus, Are You Ready to Meet God? You know, and it was going by, you know, and I, it was leaving that intersection. I thought, oh, man, I missed my chance. Missed your chance? To yeah, get and I thought, this is something. You know, so the bus pulled on, and I got off, and I saw it pulling away down the boulevard. I said, whoa, man, I just came all the way across town to get it. So I turned around, and I started going back to this uh, uh, this club that I had been in uh, the night before, because, you know, me being a musician, I was trying to get involved with as much music as I could. But I saw the bus slowing up. What I didn't notice that it could, really couldn't stop at the intersection. It was just moving down in front of Grauman's. And uh, I saw it slow up, and I thought, man, you know, hope came back in my heart. And I actually ran against the red light there on the street. I said, oh, it's here. You know, so I ran all the way down there. And uh, when I got there, I looked on the bus, and I saw it packed out. So I got discouraged again. Now, I wasn't familiar with the powers of darkness. You know, by that time, the Lord had brought me to a point where I knew that there was spiritual warfare. But, uh, you know, I really couldn't discern what was happening. Well, uh, how did you know it was spiritual warfare? What was happening to you that was making you to know all that? Well, you know, I spent most of my life in music. You know, I started off when I was a kid. Now, uh, you are one of the uh, Alamo brothers that we just listened to, uh, the gospel group singing John the Revelator, yes, and you have always been involved in music. But what happened in your life before that, that brought you to the knowledge that something was desperately wrong and that you had lost control of everything? That well, you know, I had, having put all my life into it, uh, I, was, uh, I became convinced when I was a teenager after having uh, uh, learned a lot of instruments, and I saw that there was mu money to be made in music and, it, and plus a lot of fame and popularity. So I decided that this is what I based my life on. Even though I had uh, gone to Sunday school uh, when I was a kid and I had as far as you know, church concerned, I thought that it was something that uh, was past me. Because I, you know, I went to a Baptist church and uh, I went regularly. I even played the piano there or the youth choir. But at no time there did I understand anything about the power of That'll God. That'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> that's the truth. But uh, I really, I couldn't, uh, as far as like uh, a foundation for my life, that, you know, there wasn't anything there. To did you become involved in drugs? Yeah, I sure did. See, once I stopped, uh, I decided, uh, you know, at an early age that uh, I was going to stop going to church, and I got up in the music, where I just automatically start, uh, you know, getting off into that scene. And, well, of course, drugs are uh, right there. And, uh, you know, I started taking them. I started taking them rather late because I was so serious about my music. I didn't even drink or, or smoke or anything, you know. But, of course, I didn't have any power in God. I didn't, I wasn't going after God. And I just, you know, sank right into it. Regardless of how hard I made up my mind, I was going to be a legitimate, solid musician. But, uh, you know, it just didn't work. Well, you know, Leon, it doesn't make any difference. Not only you. Many, many thousands, millions of people sit in churches, sing in the choir, play the piano, do all these things. That doesn't make any difference which church it is because there's the answer to it all. You must be born again. And if you're not born again, there's two pe classes of people. There's lost and there's saved. And you could be there all of your life, whether it's that church or any other church, you know, that really doesn't have anything to do with it because it isn't the denomination of church, it isn't the, the power that that church represents or any of those things. It's you must be born again. It's a commandment. Then you came and you gave your heart to the Lord. Yes, ma'am. I, you know, when I did get on that bus, right, that's where I really heard the gospel. Well, we ba the we're back time. on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, uh, it, it was, it really, uh, that was quite a Could day we for help me. You? <laughs> I was getting ready to turn around again. I, I turned around a second time because I saw the bus packed out, and I said, I can't believe it. I, you know, I just, uh, and I hear the bus is packed out. Where did all these people come from that fast? There couldn't possibly be any room on there for me. So I turned around and started to walk away. And then that's when the brother said, uh, you know, came over and stopped me. He said, hey, did you want to come up to service? 
I said, well, yeah, I was planning on coming up, but I, I, there's no room I can, I couldn't possibly get on the bus. He said, oh, no, they're all getting off. And I thought, what? And they all got off. They were witnesses, you know, they came down regularly. And I didn't know it. And when I, I went to get on the bus and I had uh, the full run of the bus. You know? <laughs> but uh, that was my first experience with uh, the powers of darkness, really trying to discourage me because, uh, you know, the Lord knew I was just about ready to hear the gospel that very night. And uh, it's amazing how, the, you know, the powers of darkness will come against, will come against uh, the Lord trying to deal with people. And uh, uh, that was when I did hear the gospel. I made it up there. and. Uh, you know, for the first time in my life, I actually heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, and, you know, I received it right into my heart, and, Was born and I again. chose the Lord. Amen. Then, your sister came with her daughter, April, who is next to you. Now, this April, at that time, was a little bitty thing. She was a tiny little girl, came with her mother to the services. Linda, let them see you. Let them see you. Now, April, you was the next of the family that accepted the Lord as a little child. You came as a little child and accepted Christ as your Savior. Yes, ma'am. And you've been in that church practically all of your life, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. And your mother, then Linda, was you next? Yes, ma'am, I sure was. I had no intentions of serving God, coming up to that church. My mom just kept telling me, go up and see your brother, go up and see your brother. But by then, I was working for CBS Studios, living in Hollywood Hills. I knew producers, writers, millionaires, going to parties in Bel Air, and just, I thought I finally had everything that I wanted, that I had just finally made it, and I just wasn't ready to, I didn't want any more trips or anything like that. And when I went up to the church, I went up with the intentions of dragging Leon out of there. And I said, you know, come on, Leon, I can give you this and I can give you that. It was like offering him the world on a silver platter. And uh, he looked at me and he told me there was a burning hell. And I said, what? <laughs> I just, that wasn't what, what I wanted to What are you smoking now, hear. huh? <laughs> yeah, last time I'd seen him, he was sitting in a tree with a shotgun stoned out of his mind. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's That's what I was God. trying to get him to tell, but I couldn't get him off the bus. <laughs> I never got him off the bus. <laughs> so, like I said, I didn't believe in God. My brothers were more into going to the little church across the street from our house than I was. And... I just had lived a really fast, hard life. I started out really young and just set out on my own. And I was 23 when I got saved. And if I hadn't got saved then, I know I would just have completely gone down the tubes and just lost everything because my mind was just gone. And I had three children, and it just used to scare me to death. What in the world was I going to do with those kids? when they got to be teenagers. I didn't want them to have to go through what I had gone through. And now my daughter April and Chucky and Meyer, they're all raised in the foundation. And All of uh, Linda's children, all of you, here's Myron, here's one son Myron, here's Chuck over here. Chuck, raise your hand so the cameraman will know who you are. This is Daniel. And this is April. These are all Linda's children. 